Welcome to the PBA 50 United Healthcare from the Villages Championship Rounds here. I am Craig Allen, and to my left is Hall of Famer Johnny Petraglia and John Mark Manzione. Hey guys, so here it is. It's it's the finals, and Johnny, you know, Joel Carlson's in kind of a unique situation. Last week we saw 171 combined PBA Tour titles in the finals. This week it's 55, a lowly 55. <laughs> Several Hall of Famers, one guy in Mike Scroggins, who someday may be destined for the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Joel yeah. on the national stage, is, compared to them, he's unknown. What do you do in Joel Carlson's situation when you know you've got that murderer's row ahead of you? In Joel's position, it's 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 very difficult right now. But but at the same time, he's he's got a he bowls so well all week. He threw such good shots all week. He has to uh, just get into the moment of one shot at a time, one game at a time, and and pretty much forget about who he's bowling, which mm -hmm. he's done very well for three days. Oh yeah, exactly. And uh, and and just keep competing the way he's been competing. My coach told me, anytime you're in a pressure situation, mm -hmm. don't let your game break down. Mm. And uh, Joel seems to have done that very well. All right. Thank you, Johnny. And so, Johnny, th it's going to be an honor to be joined by you for the duration of the Stepladder Finals. Really appreciate it. Oh. All right. Well. And, Johnny, the other uh, story as we watch Tom Baker step up and get his match started against Joel Carlson is Tom Baker starting the second round of match play in 16th place, bowls his way onto the show, comes out at the gate with an 824 series for the first three. Unbelievable performance from Tommy. Tommy has been so great for so long. And, and the thing is that you can never count Tommy out. At the, at the end of the first block of qualifying, he was 90 over. And uh, he was... Oh, 100 and something pins out of the number. And then he, he came out the next day, he shot uh, 700 the first three, and then he bowled 300. He's, he picked up 200 pins in the first four games, and all of a sudden he's in the middle of the tournament, and he hasn't looked back. Mm. And uh, the one thing about Tommy that um, is a strong suit as you enter match play is uh, the more important it is, the better he bowls. Tommy doesn't shake. You don't have to worry about whether Tommy's going to choke or not. He's going to. He's going to throw good shots when he needs it. Yeah, Tommy just always seems to be the same guy. He's so poised. He's so even keel. I almost always see a smile on the man's face. Yeah, and in shape. You know, Tommy oh, yeah. turned 60. He's on the, he's on the, uh, like one of us senior, super senior competitors. It's amazing. I know. When you look at I him. know. Yeah, just a great athlete. <laughs> well, you open up that four-game block, 11.03 scratch, 12.08 with bonus pins. How do you compete with that? He goes from 16 to fourth in yeah. four games, in average four in 3.02. Games. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. And Johnny, we've seen a lot of these this week. Pocket yeah. seven tens. Pocket seven tens. Uh, you see a lot of them. The villages is known for high scores, and most of the time the shot is outside, and the ball hooks back a lot, which creates a lot of pocket seven tens. But it also creates a lot of strikes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you uh, you can't get down on yourself when you leave that because um, he's liable to throw a nine bagger right behind. Sure. You. And Lord knows we've seen enough of those today. <laughs> now, I want to explain an interesting thing about Joel here. Please do. Joel had a, uh, the, jo the shoes that are wearing, somebody else had very similar shoes, and apparently both of them had left them in the paddock, and, and uh, uh, the, somebody took the wrong shoes. They took Joel's shoes instead of their shoes when they went home. And Joel... Wears they, they wear approximately the same size, so the shoe fit wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. However, Joel wears the type of heel on his slide foot that has a little bit of felt at the front of it. And nobody had that type of heel. Uh, I keep one in, in, uh, in my bag just in case uh, we run into very sticky approaches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hardly ever wear it, maybe once a year, mm -hmm. but it's in there. And... Uh, they, they were asking, does anybody have this kind of heel? And I said, yes, I do. Wow. And Joel asked if he could borrow it. Wow. So uh, it, Joel wins this tournament because I had my heel. <laughs> there you go, baby. <laughs> In Are the shoes of so legends. <laughs> Are you going to let him keep the heel or is he going to have to buy his own? <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> I might, I, might want, I might let him sign it and keep it for a souvenir if he goes all the way. <laughs> so. Wow. Man, is he sending that ball out to the twig, yeah. Johnny. Yes, he's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty uh, interesting. Of, of uh, 17 and 18, uh, uh, that's the TV pair. Mm -hmm. 
uh, 17 and 18. Uh, the whole house plays great, but um, this pair, uh, all of the bowlers say, is the toughest to carry. Interesting. And uh, you, you can hit the pocket, but you don't strike as much as you do on okay. the other pairs. Speaking of carry, John, I have to say I, my heart broke for you watching you last week in that match against Pete Weber. I mean, the pocket 7-9 split. Well, last week's format, I had to uh, qualify in the top eight after uh, after match. I mean, after the two days of qualifying, mm -hmm. uh, the final day, I had to qualify in the top eight, which I did. And then I had to qualify in the top eight again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> Uh, which I did, and then we got into match play, and you had to qualify in the top five, and yeah. I won seventh, seventh, fifth to get to the show, uh -huh. and, and now I'm bowling my 17th game, and because of a, a breakdown in the first block, uh, there was no breaks, mm -hmm. and I think I was bleary on. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling I was playing <laughs> a, a couple of boards in too far, mm -hmm. you know, flat seven, turkey yeah. flat seven. I should yeah. have realized that I was too far in. Mm -hmm. And it came down to one shot. And, uh, but that's my fault. Nobody else's fault. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you don't give Pete Weber a leak. You don't, not for sure. You don't, you, don't, you don't have a crack in the door. If you do that, it's over. You know, it's funny you should mention Pete because we were mentioning earlier, Johnny, you have had the experience of bowling against Dick Weber in match play and now <laughs> Dick Weber's son Pete in match play. So yes. which was the tougher out for you in match play? That's, uh, you know, there's uh, idolization uh -huh. if there's such a word. Uh -huh. <laughs> No. Uh -huh. and then and then bowl and Pete. I mean, I bowl Pete on TV. I, uh, uh, Dick Weber is a tremendous talent and a great ambassador of the game. But uh, Pete's a little better than that okay. as far as in talent. Yeah, and and uh, and Pete has been, uh, you know, a, a really great part of the senior tour. He's he's a, he's he's come onto the senior tour and he, senior tour and he's adopted it that uh, he's really a major part of it and, and helping us to grow. Mm. Well, he continues to do very well on the main PBA Tour. Yes, you're exactly. Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh. There oh. it goes again, Craig. I mean, we saw it all tournament long. One missed single pin spare after another. Johnny, yeah. why was that such a, such a struggle this week? What happens is, especially at the 10 pin or the 7 pin, if you're left-handed, this is cheetah pattern, and on cheetah you're inside, and and as you move in, there's a little more more oil, but they're done in strips. And then once you get past the strip on the other side, the ball wants to hook a little mm -hmm. early, and mm -hmm. it surprises you every mm -hmm. once in a while that it grabbed early, and once you you very rarely saw anybody miss it in the gutter. Mm -hmm. And that uh, might have shook up Joel a little bit, yeah. but he still has a 20 pin lead. So Joel, uh, he may be a virtual unknown, in particular, you know, on the national stage compared to his uh, competition in this championship round. But he does have a PBA regional title, and he is a member of the Madison uh, Bowling Association Hall of Fame. And, and in Madison, Wisconsin, you don't get into their Hall of Fame unless you got some game. There's some good uh -huh. bowlers up there. Absolutely, and and Joel's got a very solid game. And a lot of times, understand that. Uh, here comes Tom. <laughs> 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 well, someone's got the crowd behind him, Johnny. Yeah. You know, because somebody doesn't bowl on tour doesn't uh, Absolutely. make them a great ball. We right. have great bowlers around the country that, mm -hmm. whether it's their business yeah. or uh, the company that they work for, haven't mm -hmm. been able to come out here and bowl, mm -hmm. who are tremendous talents, and, and Joel's a perfect example of that. Wow. Here he comes. <laughs> okay, we're seeing a lot. It looks like the miss on this pattern is out, not in. When you mm -hmm. miss it in, it's 10 pin. When you miss it out, you got a chance to get it to come back and do just what Tom Baker did mm -hmm. there. That's very good, Craig. And, and, and all the mistakes, if you're thinking of a mistake, the mistake should be wide. It should never be short mm -hmm. because uh, it's always going to make it back. And that's what cheetah pattern does.
Carlson with a chance to hold on to the lead early on in this right, opening yeah. match. We got a ball game, boys. Yep. Johnny, what's the thought pattern that should be going through Carlson's head here? I mean, he got in, he, he bowled great all week. He got in with the big game in the, in, in, in the position round. He's got to run the ladder, and he stands here and he has to watch. Look at those banners on the end of the four people he has to beat. <laughs> yeah. you, you must take this one game at a time and then one shot at a time. You, you, you can't start getting ahead of yourself thinking of, if I can get by this guy, what's next? And then, uh, then you're really in trouble. Great and, shot. Like, those are two really well-thrown shots, and uh, very, very important after uh, you saw Tommy get his legs under him and he was ready to go because there's a strong possibility that Tommy could strike out. Mm -hmm. Seems like the further out Carlson uh, throws his shots, the, the better the reaction is when the ball moves through the pins. If, you're, if you have the kind of game that um, you can get the ball up toward the pocket without it overhooking on Cheetah, that's your best look. Mm. Oh, he carries that lazy yeah. 10. And you'll see that in Scroggins. Scroggins loves that shot when he bowls. Ron Moore is is going fairly straight. Mm -hmm. uh, Pete Weber is up there who goes around simply because he's Pete Weber. Yeah. You know, he's that, yeah. you know that's, uh, it's sort of like saying, uh, why is Tiger Woods doing so well right. this week? Because he's Tiger Woods. Because he's Tiger <laughs> Woods, exactly. Yeah. That's a very important uh, shot like that for him to carry. He's in the two O's, and and, uh, and Joel just has been put in a position to really drop the hammer right mm. now as he gets up with his next two frames. It just didn't seem like Tom uh, sent, sent his ball as far right on that strike shot as he had on the previous shot on 17. Uh, you're right. Uh, when, they, when they use the expression uh, over under, John, mm. Carl, John Mark, it's... Mm -hmm. uh, if you get it in a little bit, it's not going to hook as much as if you get it wide, mm -hmm. like Craig brought out mm -hmm. earlier. And if you get it too wide too early, it'll hook high. Yeah. 225 max score for Baker Carlson. Can strike here to take a 30-pin lead late in this opening match. So this is a pretty big shot for Carlson here, is it not, Johnny? Yes, it is, because uh, this puts him in the 220s if he can throw this one. Wow. Oh, I oh. checked up on him. Yep. Looked a little tentative, like he wanted to make sure that one got there for some reason. Yes, he didn't throw it, it yeah, good. He, he, this one, he, he really, you know, overhit it and, and right up the lane instead of that loose stroke that he's had. So it's a 6-10 for Carlson. Must convert here, definitely. Important spare attempt. All right. Covers the spare. All right. Now he has a 10-pin lead, and this is uh, uh, what makes our, our sport so great, great, the way the scoring works. Mm -hmm. Because you know right now as you get up in the ninth frame, if I get a nine count, Tommy can shut me out. Yeah. If I strike, I control my own destiny. Mm, so stuff. the ninth frame becomes a really, really important foundation frame. What wow. a shot. Yeah, he really, he really threw that one well in the clutch. That was an extremely important shot, and, and he made a really good shot. Made sure you get that one to the break point. Yeah, as he, as he followed through, you can see almost all of his palm, which means he didn't overturn it or top it mm. or anything. Tom Baker has such a unique stance with all the fidgeting he does. Yeah. <laughs> I love watching that. He concentrates on keeping that shoulder right where he wants it, mm. that right shoulder. Come on, ball. Oh, gosh. Now, that's big because if he strikes out in the 10 for 214, uh, Joel will need 20. And it will come down to pressure if he can handle it.
pin. Yeah. Yeah, single pins may have been tough this week, Johnny, but I really don't think we're going to see Tom Baker miss a single pin in the championship no, round. No, you're not. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, Tom has been the uh, senior bowler of the year four times, and now he's turned 60, which uh, so he was senior, super senior yep. bowler of the year last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he's not going to slow down. He, you, you can just look at his physique and know exactly. how much he keeps himself in shape. Yeah. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, now Joel is sitting on the on the bench, and he already knows I have to mark. Yes. It doesn't matter whether he gets the second one or not. It's just how much kind of a mark do I need? Is it a spare with any kind of wood, or do I need a spare strike or the first strike? I got to believe if you're Carlson, you're just envisioning yourself right now just packing that first exactly. shot. Exactly. You know, 10 in the pit is yeah. what you're thinking about. Yeah. yeah. How long have you known Tom Baker? Forever. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of uh, how far back. Uh, Forty years. Wow. I guess mm -hmm. <laughs> something like that. And uh, just been a tremendous talent for the forty years. That was not his finest yeah. shot, but he'll get away with it. Oh, oh almost. <laughs> and that is extremely important pin. That's the wow. second one he's left on that lane. Second one he's left. Right, Craig. So. Solid eight, and, and it's such a big pin. Wow. So for Carlson, two strikes and two nine counts on this right lane, and the one missed ten pin. So he needs spare nine to win the game instead of spare strike to win the game. First strike, it's over. But Look at this. Oh, my oh goodness. My he God. topples he the eight pin back in the pit. And Carlson with a Carlson, big clutch strike in the 10th. And he's going to get by the first match with that strike. Wow. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and that's the difference, that's Johnny. It. That's it. He's just got to keep this ball on the lane. There you go. There it is. That's enough. Now, how much of a momentum boost is this for, for Joel? He's just demonstrated to himself that he, he's going to be able to handle himself in this I, environment. I think so. You know, he's, well, okay, I got past the first giant killer. <laughs> the mm -hmm. second one is up. Now I've got to bow Mike Scroggins. No problem. The defending champion. The defending <laughs> champion, that's all. <laughs> Now, Scroggins is going to have his side of the lane to himself, Johnny, yes. uh, as a left-hander yourself in this situation. Is that always necessarily an advantage, or how, do, how could that play out for Scroggins here? In this situation, it is because you're not in the first match, mm -hmm. and you've got your 20 minutes of practice. You mm -hmm. could almost uh, blow a hole in, in, the, in the pattern where nobody else is going to mess with mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and, and throw the ball right where you want to mm -hmm. play and the lanes aren't going to change. The, the lights might change it a little bit. Yeah. Your shots, if you get past the first game and you end up bowling three more games, mm -hmm. can change it a little bit. But in this game, it should be no different mm -hmm. than when he was practicing, mm -hmm. which will be a tremendous advantage. For somebody like Pete or, or Ron Moore, who bowled a title match, yeah. uh, the lanes, especially uh, for Ron Moore, who's coming in, in in game four, they could change a lot. Mm -hmm. and. Um, that that could mean the difference between winning and losing. I always thought it would be uh, if you lead the tournament after in, in this particular case, 32 games. I always thought it would be nice if um, uh, the, the leader deserves something, mm. and he should be able to choose between 17 and 18 and 19 and 20. Wow. You know, if he could, you, they could work it out. Mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, and, and the stepladder finals format is in some ways the cruelest yes. concept in professional sports because exactly. here's Ron Moore who has blown the doors off the field for the most part from, from first game to last. Yeah. 
uh, but he's still going to have to win this one one more game in the stepladder finals to be called the champion. Right. I, I because of. Uh the way the tournament works, and I've been involved in the same way. People have led tournaments by 500 pins, and it came down to one game. Well, Johnny, and, and, uh, and I remember the 2008 Senior U.S. Open was one such experience for you when you, you led that by, like, 400 pins going into the title match against Wayne Webb. Yes, there you go. Now, there'll be an example. It's, uh, it happened against Earl Anthony in the 1974 Tournament of Champions. Mm -hmm. I led by 480. And I lost to Earl 215-213. Uh, wow. And, but it's happened to... A lot of people. Absolutely. And that, that one game can be critical, and it's just the way our sport works. Well, so. what did you learn from those experiences, Johnny, that in, that in any way would give you a piece of advice to give to Ron Moore right now uh, in the situation that he's in? Having dominated this event, he's got one match to win to, to uh, claim the title. I think that, that Ron, being a senior bowler of the year a couple of times and, and winning as many times as he was, as he has, mm -hmm. that – you know, he's ready for it, win or lose. He knows what our situation is. He mm -hmm. knows how it works. And he's, and he's going to go out and bowl the best game he can. And, uh, you know, he's in, he's in a position right now where he's thinking, I'm going to either bowl Pete Weber, Mike Scroggins, or, you know, or Joel Carlson, mm -hmm. who will have had three games yeah. on the pair and mm -hmm. is dead lined up. Mm -hmm. So it's... Uh, you know, it's not a, a happy uh, thought to have in your head right. no matter what the situation right. is. Right. And so you you go up there and, and, and all you can say to yourself is, I'm going to try to strike every ball, mm -hmm. and hopefully it's enough. Mm -hmm. And if you're unlucky uh, and your opponent bowls 290, that's the way it is. That's the way our sport works. You accept that there are going to be times that you're fifth right. and work your way up the line. Mm -hmm. So how important is it? for the mental side of Ron Moore to take the lead back in that last game is, is he was dominating pretty much for two days. Had a little a little off kilter there a little bit, but and then game he got eight, it back. Jumped back up there. Well here's the here's one of the things that has changed. And uh, whether it's extra frame or which is uh, uh, the difference between net network TV is when you were the leader in a tournament, there were locked in commercials at three and a half and six and a half frames. So you would always let your opponent start unless there was a drastic difference in the two lanes. You would let your opponent start and try to come out with a double because the last thing you wanted was for you to bowl one frame and let him throw a double and put you 10 pins in the hole right away. And so you, you wanted to try to get that advantage back to even keel. So you would let him start. If you could throw a double, then he bowls frames two and three. You bowl frames three and four, and they cut to a commercial. So in most cases, you might have had the lead or you were at least even, and then he had to sit for two minutes. And it, and it would sort of level things off. Now, there is no commercials. So that strategy goes out the window. You've got to really decide which lane you think is the best lane for you to finish on or if you have them fairly even which is the worst lane for your opponent to finish on in a 10th frame it's a sort of a different mindset and Scroggins elects to let Carlson start this match right he's going to let he's going to let Carlson finish the match he's going to finish first he doesn't want to lose sitting on the bench he's going to try and hopefully stay close enough to shut him out in the 10th Solid 10. Good shot. Just judge it from, from Carlson's ball roll and ball speed. It really doesn't look to me, J Johnny, like he's necessarily going to have to move a whole bunch, uh, no matter how many games he bowls on this pair. You're right. I, well, with, well, first of all, he's bowling a lefty now. So uh, his side of the lane isn't going to change too much because mm -hmm. it's five shots on each side. Mm -hmm. And then if he could get by this game... Uh, uh, then he's going to bowl Pete, who's going to be maybe 10 boards deeper right. than he is. Right. So it isn't going to change too much. And even Ron Moore is going to be a little bit further in than he is. So his shot is going to be fairly steady. And obviously, because Mike's all by himself, his shot's going to be fairly steady. Mm hmm Why 
but an opening shot from Scrog yeah. is no doubt strike to open the, the match. Yeah, if you watch close how loose that swing is. Mm. He's been there a number of times, whether it's on cable, extra frame, or network, right. it doesn't matter. Right. And he uh, and he's defending champ. He has a lot of confidence in this center. I think Scroggs doesn't quite get the credit that he deserves just because he's got this kind of dry, simple game that people mm -hmm. don't think a lot of. But the guy has won two majors, the Masters and the U.S. Open, by the way. And you yeah. don't win the U.S. Open unless you're in a very versatile player. Eight PBA titles overall in the regular tour and, and, a, and a potential future Hall of Famer. Absolutely. He's a, he's a terrific bowler. That uh, There are people that are underrated, and certainly Mike is one of them. And there you go. And that's his... About as loose as you can get, right there. What well, it it helps knowing you're bowling in the very tournament that you won last year. That loosens the arm swing a bit, doesn't it? It, it sure <laughs> does. It makes a, a really big difference. Yeah. Uh-oh, it looked like a little bit of a tug, Johnny. Wow. Yeah. But it, up the lane, if you don't have a lot of hand, up the lane will hold. That's, wow. that's the secret of, uh, of cheetah pattern. I mean, that's well inside of where he's generally been pitching right. the ball. Oh, he's thrown it well. He's, he's nice and relaxed. He's making really good shots. Both of these shots were a little further inside of the shots that he's been throwing so far, Johnny. Is it possible he's made an adjustment here and moved the pinch in? He might have made an adjustment. Uh, the, uh, the cheetah pattern is the type of pattern that you know if you miss a little wide, it's going to make it back to the pocket. And you, you may want to trust wide to know that uh, mm -hmm. you can do it. Mm -hmm. But now with one game under his belt, he may be making better shots. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. His pocket f six Solid pin six, for yeah. Mike Scroggins. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> now that's, that's, uh, he's, you could see he's upset with himself yeah. for, for missing that far in. Yeah. Oh, he's still upset with himself a little bit. Yeah. Tell his body language there. Yeah. yeah, that was a good four or five boards inside of his last shot. Yep. He got the last shot yep. out to, to almost a one board. Almost a one board. Yes. Yeah, he uh, when that came off his hand, I'm thinking if he's going to carry that shot, I mean, Carlson, just pack your shoes now because he's just not <laughs> yeah. going to miss. Or pack someone else's uh, shoes. Or that too. Someone, yeah. yeah, somebody yeah. else's and, shoes. And, and, and leave the soul at the booth for us on yep. your way out. <laughs> well, re but... Remember that the bowlers on the show are all averaging probably 240 yeah. for the week uh, or close to it. And, uh, you know, you don't average that high unless you've got room. Absolutely. Good point. Oh, that, that nine pin try to withstand the blow, but toppled okay. over at the last minute. We'll get the slow-mo look at it here. Well, we would have. But there's the Scroggins cranium in the way. That's all right. <laughs> Scroggins noggin. Should I go there? Well, you just did. <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. My. He topples the pocket 7-10. There you go. Well, if his arm still wasn't loose yet, it's going to be plenty gonna loose, now, loose now, Johnny. Yep. He's creeping even farther inside with yeah. that shot. He's really going to watch yeah. his speed getting in there now. Oh, my. Look at this. Wow. Oh, and simultaneously. Simultaneously, too, like that at Rock X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and look at Carlson dancing in slow mo over it. Very yeah. nice. <laughs> and that might just be the break you need to just calm all the nerves. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then he, boy, capitalized and made a great yep. shot. 
I, I think it's important for the people to remember, too, that uh, when, it, when we, I was talking about the room that they have on the lane, you know, however, when, we, when you look at the averages, remember, here's a perfect example. Today, bowling in the semis, mm -hmm. I was on 27 and 8, and the next game I was on 1 and 2. And then the game after that, I was on 31 and 2. Mm. And the game after that, I was wow. on 9 and 10, which is happening to them. So it isn't like three games in the league. It's you're bouncing around different parts of the building. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my goodness. My God, Stone solid cold, nine. solid 9. The same thing that happened to Tommy. Just, uh, and he barely toppled that, that Stone 9 on 17 at the last minute. And this one oh. stood up. Wow. This could be Joel's day right here. Karma. Yep. We have, uh, go ahead, Johnny. I was going to say it's what makes our sport so special. You know, priority number one is you got to make a good shot. And priority, you know, when you get it to the point where you want it, which is solid, that's priority number two. And then uh, you got to hope it carries yeah. because uh, you hit the ball down the middle of the fairway and you hope it doesn't land in a divot. Yeah. Well, that happens once every 50 times, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And in bowling, things like solid nines happen on a fairly consistent basis. You can only do what you're supposed to do, and then uh, what happens at the pins isn't up to you a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. you you're sure you're sure you can't throw much better than that that's for sure well, as much as you want to get that yeah. solid nine out ahead after you just see carlson topple at 710 it's gonna sting yeah. just a little yeah. bit yeah. yeah you're right craig yeah. that's a good point yeah here's what scroggins is sitting down watching, watching meanwhile yeah. he blasts the pocket leaves the stone nine yeah Whew. Oh, here comes that messenger. Oh, oh you got to God. be kidding me. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Johnny, you just said a moment ago, maybe yeah. it's Carlson's day. Maybe it is. That's an OMG right there. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, I, as slow as that came over, <sighs> it's incredible. Oh, it's the weakest messenger that, that I think I've ever seen topple a pin in a oh. championship round. Just oh. a little love tap there. Holy mackerel. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's interesting about Carlson is he's gotten right back down to business. He's poised and collected and calm once again and just setting up for his next shot. Boy, wow. and he makes it count both times. His, his, uh, his shots to the pocket on the right-hand lane are nothing like the left-hand lane. Mm -hmm. And he's just been dead flush on this lane. I'm curious if he wins this game to see if Pete makes him finish on the right lane mm. and not the left lane. Mm, great point. Not that you have any experience yourself making these decisions, <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> I think um, what is it, Mike could go out for 259. I'm yeah, he's still got 259 left. He's got 259 in the wood. Okay. <laughs> All right. Someone just came up and showed Johnny Petragli a picture of a horseshoe. It's onward and upwards, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Just wishing him good luck in the booth. That's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, my, my goodness. Oh. Slam seven. That's. Oh, he threw it out well. He did throw it out well. Really good. Mm. The pins do not yeah. know that he is a defending champ. That's true. 
you noticed his head? He was walking back like he knew he yeah. struck. He can't had to look back to believe yeah. that he left a seven. So he's at 238, and uh, and uh, Joel has a Joel Carson has a six bagger. He's got to stay clean. We've seen a lot of ring tens, a lot of ring sevens, eights, and nines, but for Scroggins, they're all coming in the same game, and that's mm -hmm. just that's tough. Whew. He stuffed it in there on that lane, John. He's yep. taking no chances after those last two. Man. That's it. He's thinking right now of, uh, okay, I, the Hall of Famer's gone, the defending champ's mm -hmm. gone, and now I get to bowl. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who won 37 yeah, times on the kid's store. The number one guy. <laughs> the guy who won the triple crown twice. Uh. <laughs> Just <laughs> Congratulations, Joel. He needs a mark. He does need a mark in two frames. To, to, to ensure victory. But he's on his good lane. Yeah. All right. Oh, man. This, oh, great. Two of the best shots we've seen him throw yet this game. Yeah, yeah he's, he's getting looser as time goes by. Hey, Bob. He's got good seats. <laughs> Of course, they're all going to carry now. Yeah, right. Oh, they, they'll go down now. What a nice ball game from Joel Carlson, taking advantage of those two breaks on the right lane, coming back and striking on the left after both of those, and just taking command of the match. Yes, you're right. He's uh, and he's. Really locked in on that on that left hand lane. His last two shots were two of the best we've seen. Good speed, control, body. I mean, it just looks looks real solid at the line. So what impressed me about Carlson is he wasn't still thinking about those those great breaks when he moved to the next lane to throw his next shot. He yeah. was he gathered himself again very quickly and got right back down to business. And Scroggins with another oh, solid man. seven. He, he pulled a terrific game. Yeah. When you when you he had a, a solid six. A solid nine, two solid sevens. And the six was his only somewhat errant shot. Somewhat Everything else was shot. just pounded yep. the pocket. Yep. So when Scroggins, Scroggins goes back to think about this game, what, what, what can he really try to do different? If he, he, there's nothing he can do different. It's, uh, you know, it was up to the gods. <laughs> yeah, well, Johnny, I mean, it was at this point, it, it seems prophetic what you mentioned at the beginning of the match, how what happens once the ball leaves your hand is not within your control. That's true. It's um, it's what makes the sport great. You, you have to, both have to happen. Uh, when we bowl on a condition, the villages is all high, always high scoring. Mm -hmm. And when you're working with your player reps, the, the important thing is not to get to the pocket, but to uh, the rep is trying to suggest what ball and what angle you should be playing to have the ball go through the pins properly to carry. And... Um, uh, because you know you're going to figure out how to get to the pocket mm -hmm. and who can strike the most. Mm -hmm. that, that becomes key. We can get into uh, when, uh, uh, when Joel bowls uh, Pete next game. Uh, one of the things that really makes Pete so great. It's, 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 uh, if people haven't watched it, it, it's pretty easy to explain. So it's a 268, 217 victory, unless he gets another messenger there. <laughs> 268, 217 win for Carlson over the defending champion. Congratulations again, Mike. You both great.
little bit more practice work out there, Ron Moore. The tournament later is going to come on and get four. Pete Weber will get six shots, and then we'll open up the semifinal match for you. What, and I, and when you get the, you know, you're going to get these six shots in your Pete Weber. What do you do with them? What is the wisest use of those six shots before the game begins? Well, the first two shots you throw are exactly when you walked off camera uh, when you had your practice shots before you went on the air to see how much different the lanes are compared to what they were an hour ago. And then you start making your small adjustments from there, whether it's moving or whether it's changing bowling balls. And that's what they're going to try to find out right now. In the case of Pete, it's how am I going to bowl this game mm -hmm. right now. In the case of Ron Moore, it's all right, and I know what's changed up to this point. How much can it change in one more game? Mm. Uh, indoors isn't uh, affected nearly as much as uh, every once in a while when we've had the step ladder outdoors, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where they've changed as much as an arrow wow. <laughs> in, in, the, in the space of a game. Well, we know Pete likes to curve it a little bit. Look at the line that Carlson's been throwing. How is it going to affect? Pete's ball rolls, he's going to have to kind of cross that maybe twice. He's going to have to go through it to the break point and then maybe he's try to He's going to go cover. through it to the break point and he's going to bring it back. Pete is going to be further in uh, than, uh, than Carlson is, uh, you know, further toward the center of the lane. And uh, Pete's magic is um, his, uh, his release is so pure. It's like it's as pure as silk and his, and his swing is on line. And uh, when you watch Pete, you very rarely see him grab it at the bottom with his fingers. You see the fingers sort of open. So he has uh, an extreme amount of axis tilt. What is important about that is axis tilt, as, as extreme as Pete's is, means the ball does not read the front half of the lane. So Pete can pretty much change bowling balls week to week, no matter what the pattern is, uh, because his ball doesn't read the front half of the lane. All he has to do is play the back half of the lane. And uh, it, it sounds simple, but it's, uh, but nobody else really has it as good as he yeah. does yeah. and is able to do it as good as he does. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you watch that ball, you can almost see the rotation going sideways yeah. because the axis tilt is so severe. And it'll get through the front half, and then when the ball tips, it's already 40 feet down the lane. Uh, it, it is a special thing to watch. Well, and because of that, he can get the ball to almost seemingly float through the fronts better than anybody and still get on it a little bit. Float is a perfect word. That's it. You're exactly right. The ball floats through the front without ever hooking early. And, uh, and, and if he wants to get on it a little bit, if he has to make it hook, which he doesn't this week, other weeks when they're a little bit tighter and he has to make it hook, he might touch it a little. But his concentration this work is to make sure this week is to make sure he doesn't touch it uh, because he's, he's feeding the ball to the pattern. The ball's not going to hook early. And, and, and the one thing that people don't realize with Pete is Pete is very, very accurate. So what he's hitting at that splice, what he's hitting at the arrows uh, is what he's pretty much going to hit every shot. And so if his angle's correct, he's always going to be in the pocket. And it's a question of whether he carries or not. Uh, it's pretty much why he's there every week. And, Johnny, it's my understanding that the release Pete has today is different than the release he had, say, 30 years ago. Once yes. the reactive stuff came out, it, it, it really, the release he had at that time wasn't compatible with that new, much more aggressive equipment. He didn't need the help from the bowling balls. He could do that with his hand. W what kind of work did he have to do, Johnny, to change his release so that he could basically breathe new life into his career? I think uh, that that's that's a real good point, John Mark. He, he uh, you know, Pete had a very good career on on plastic and rubber, and he had a very good career on regular urethane, mm -hmm. and then when Reactive came out, and he's when you watch the old films of when Pete won his first title or his first couple, and you see how different his release was uh, compared to what it is now. He adapted to the bowling mm -hmm. world, and and in any era that he was in he would be just as good as, as right now. There are other bowlers that you can look at that you can say the reactive ball made their careers. Right. Other bowlers, the reactive ball hurt their careers. Uh, an example would be Mark Roth. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mark Roth, uh, when reactive came out, it actually hurt him because all of a sudden other bowlers could do with the bowling ball what Mark Roth did with his hands. Yeah. 
and and so all of a sudden bowlers became as good mm -hmm. as him without mm -hmm. changing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but and other bowlers were helped. Pete, to me, just seemed to go along in mm -hmm. every era. He's the same, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's um, it's been special watching oh, over yeah. the last uh, thirty years. Oh you know, yeah, watching them bowl. So how does he do it? Right. I mean, that's the million dollar question. You know, they're good for so long. I, I, let, let me put it this way. Uh, I guess the best way to put it would be to use a comparison. Parker Bone has two sons and a daughter. The daughter doesn't bowl. The two sons do. One's 11, one's 12, one's left-handed, one's right-handed. They both have won a bunch of JBT tournaments. They both already bowled 300. Uh, Leslie, Parker's wife, bowled in college. And she bowled on some of the tour. It's in the DNA. No doubt about it. Yeah. And Pete Weber has Dick Weber's DNA. Yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah. You know that's that's a major factor yeah. in, in in what has made him. Mm -hmm. Obviously, practice, mm -hmm. determination, everything else comes into it. But it's but you you need that gene to start with. Yeah. So here we go, guys. Carlson has just knocked off the defending champion, knocked off a Hall of Famer and Tom Baker in the match before that, and he's going to try and slay the biggest legend that he'll face in the finals here. Oh, ring and, and ten. Pete Weber. Yeah, ring and pocket ten pin there for his opening shot. And, Johnny, we, we saw carry dog uh, Mike Scroggins throughout the last match, and it rears its ugly head here for Carlson in the opening shot. Yeah, it was a great shot. Solid ten. It's isn't much you can do about that. <laughs> and Pete doing exactly what you thought, Johnny, making Carlson finish on that right lane where he got those yep. breaks. Good point. That's got to hang on. Okay. <laughs> They're taking care of you, Johnny. <laughs> Okay, a little bit quick, and uh, but that was that was a perfect example. As he gets up, watch how the fingers open. Yeah. See the fingers open, uh -huh. and it's all wrist. Yeah. And and he's just rotating around the ball. The axis tilt gets through the front, and all he's doing is playing the back half of the lane. You know, it came down to one ball by Ron Moore, whether Pete was the leader or Ron Moore was the mm -hmm. leader. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to recognize that uh, if Ron Moore didn't strike in the 11th, Pete would have led the tournament with a losing record in match play. Wow. Uh, which doesn't happen too mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. Am I right, Craig? He was something like seven, eight, and one. Yeah, Ron and Pete both six, nine, and one. Six, nine, and one. Oh yeah, my, six, nine, and one. <laughs> that's that's a lot. And Ron Moore too, six, nine, and one. Yeah, and separated by only six pins after all those games. Wow, that shows how great the both of them both. Sure, and six, nine, and yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we saw Craig. We saw Pete Weber lose consecutive matches. He shot consecutive two sixty eights and lost both matches. Lost both of them. <laughs> and and. Actually, and today, great shot there by Joel. Uh, uh, today, uh, you know, I was struggling, and then I bowled Pete, and I, he shot 258 at me, and I mm -hmm. shot 278. There you he's, go. He had an unlucky day. I rest day. my case, John. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had an unlucky day, and he's in second. <laughs> well, and I think the more impressive part for Moore is Weber was done a few frames before Ron was. Right. So Ron knew exactly what he had to do, had a big string going. I think Pete either 10-pinned or 8-pinned in the ninth in frame the ninth of that frame, game. Yeah. And Ron knew exactly what he had to oh, do, yeah. and, and he did. You could tell with very animated body language on those last strikes he threw. Mm, yes, it was. <laughs> and Joel looks completely relaxed. Well, and that's back to the last match where he's got his feet in the right spot now, and his miss was right, and that's what that did, and mm -hmm. it came back just fine.
Oh, he trips oh. that four pin. Puts his, puts his weapon back in its holster and brushes it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those very few shots where you could see his elbow get out and he mm -hmm. got around the ball. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do that too often. <laughs> Not only does he have uh, Carl finish on the right lane, you could see right away he likes the left lane a lot better. Yeah, good point. Johnny, what's the importance of the step backwards that Pete takes in the beginning of his he, approach? Uh, he's developed uh, like a momentum step where he's not really changing the amount of steps that he takes but something to get him going. Okay. Actually, it's something I wish I could develop so I can get a little more ball mm. speed. Uh, as I get older, and and Carl just keeps throwing it great. Slaps that great. ten out. Yep. yep, sure did. Unfazed. Unfazed. You're exactly right. Unfazed. Cuts the ten. I mean, you made a good shot. Well, in, in, in reality, when he looks at the guys he's got to go through, he's got to just kind of create his little out of body experience and just do what he knows how to do. And he's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, someone in the booth did mention that when you slap the 10 out the way we just saw there, that's when you know you've thrown a perfect shot. Exactly. Yeah, you've thrown it really good. Mm -hmm. This is a good lane. Uh-oh. Oh, more luck. More luck. He squeezed that wow. one off a little bit. Yeah. Okay, he tried to help that one just a touch yeah. on the upswing there. He's staring at a 4-7-10 here for a minute, but they both yeah. topple. And they both topple. Just the 4-pin. And his fingers were closed like you, you caught earlier. If he keeps that hand open, he, he definitely closed well, him quick on that got one. Got a little grabby. Well, he, yeah, he does. Grabby. Well, his fingers do close, but, yeah, he did grab that okay. one a little bit. But you know what I feel like I see a, a pro uh, bowlers wrestle with Johnny is now he's in the situation where he has to think about, he, he may think about, did I throw an errant shot or do I need to adjust do because the lane adjust. did it to me. Yeah. You know? You've got you've to decide in your own head mm -hmm. how good did I throw that ball. If I threw it really well and it finished there, I've got to move. And you and you have to be honest with yourself. Mm. How hard is that to do sometimes? It is hard. <laughs> it's, uh, that was my exact thought when when you said that. And, and that's what separates the winners from the people that can't get the silver is you have to be honest with the shot. Absolutely. I, you left a 10 pin for a reason, right? Not just a bad rack or the bowling gods are against you. Oh, ring and 10. That was a good shot. Now that was, uh, you know, he, he couldn't have thrown this one much better. It's just a solid 10. Pete asked me to give a shout out to Kenny. Kenny Seymour. And uh, well, Kenny, hope you're doing okay. Things are getting better. Can I toss in a little? Uh, of course. Something for, for a couple of weeks from now. Yeah. Because you know, it'll be on extra frame at the. At, uh, you know, the, the Up in Long Island? In Long Island, mm -hmm. my tournament for the vets uh, on extra frame at the Pro-Am. We're going to have uh, Pete and Parker Bone, Amleto Monticelli, and Walter Ray uh, in a winner-take-all uh, shootout. Cool. Let's see how he throws. Great shot there. And then right after the shootout, uh, we've added a little wrinkle this year. We're going to have we have five veterans from the five branches of the service. And I'm going to hop in there, and we're going to bowl a Baker game. Oh, cool. And uh, whichever branch wins will get more money donated to that branch of the service. Nice. So. What branch of the service did you serve in, Johnny? Army. The Army. I was in the Army. So I'm probably going to bowl with an Army guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A big shot for Carlson to keep things even through yeah. six, going shot for shot with Pete Weber. Tie match through six. This is, uh, this is as good as it gets. Hey, look, we're going to find out if Carlson can take the heat. I mean, we know Pete yeah. can. And, and he's uh, the kitchen's awfully hot that Carlson's standing in yeah. right now, man. <laughs>
Is there any in-game adjustments Carlson needs to be conscious of with Pete kind of going across his line a little bit? I think on this shot right now, he's got to he's got to be conscious of did the ball hook hard or did I throw it bad? Look like he threw it harder, and it still left a forfeit. Wow! Now that to me, he threw that shot fairly well. Yeah. And the ball hooked high, which means that lane's starting to break down. Maybe got that one right a little bit quicker. Yeah. And well, yeah, but it, but a little bit quicker a game ago was holding for flush. Yeah. And that game, it, it, it hooked to a four pin. Uh, he may have to make a two and one move in, and uh, or uh, if you don't like moving laterally, maybe moving your eyes, uh, foot down the lane further. Anything that's going to change the angle a little bit. This is. Um, We'll find out right now, you know, because this is when the shark comes out. You know, you <laughs> start point. smelling blood in the water when your <laughs> opponent didn't double. And he's taking some time getting re in here, composing yep. himself, deep breath. There are a few sharks with a sharper bite than Pete Weber out yeah. on tour, Johnny. Yeah. What a there shot from Pete, Johnny. Shot. You're right. And now he gets on his good lane. Yeah. So he could go up 20 pins in a hurry. For all of the kids out there, it's a very, very difficult thing to do when a pressure shot to just watch that and try to emulate that, keep that swing as loose as, mm. as he did right there. You know, and when I was, uh, I interviewed Mike Limangelo a few years ago about how he was able to perform in, in these action matches for tons of money. And that's what he said. He said, you just focus on your fundamentals. That's all you think yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah. What a shot from Pete Weber. He, and he wants to drill it into Carlson right now, uh, Johnny. I think there's a little bit of strategy to that performance right there. Right there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so uh, gracious of Pete to get out of the way of the camera so we can observe his <laughs> gorgeous strike. <laughs> oh, that looked. Oh. Oh man. I, I thought he threw that pretty well. I, um, I know he increased his speed and uh, and made a real good shot for that half ten. Looked like one of the most relaxed shots he's thrown yet. Yeah. So he's, he's going to have to make this and, and strike in the ninth frame to have any kind of chance. You know, I'm going through uh, Carlson's two games in eight frames. And uh, while well, he might have collapsed a couple of lucky strikes in the other game when he got that 7-10 out. But uh, by and large, I'm trying to think of when he missed the pocket. And, Good point. And uh, everyone's been there. Mm -hmm. he's, he's done a great, great job. Oh, you got to oh. be kidding me. Oh, man. And now all of a sudden the, he's, the luck he's is losing out. the hit. Yeah. Yep. Just when it seemed like it was Carlson's yeah. day last game, John, yeah. and he all just can't. The, the corner pins are a death knell all of a sudden. Yeah, that was a real good shot. Oof. That should have struck. And now you can count on Pete to close the door. Well, Pete has two turkeys, so he's in the 230s. And uh, so he needs two marks yeah. or a strike. Yeah, it's over. 
Johnny, I believe you were uh, pretty practically in the front row at that U.S. Open that uh, Pete won when he went ballistic yeah. after winning. Yeah, he went ballistic. What, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, what uh, is your most vivid memory of, of uh, just that moment witnessing him just explode after winning that yeah. tournament? It's just one. Uh, you know what he said, well, whoever you think you are, I am. Yeah. <laughs> to be completely honest, I, I can't figure out what it means. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm still a little lost on that one. It's uh, great. Yeah. But uh, as far as um, the, uh, the two shots in the tent, yeah. the first one, which was a solid 10, which yeah. would have won, uh -huh. Uh, you know, you, you watch where he slide, and you watch where he's hit, and you watch mm -hmm. where the ball's arcing to. Mm -hmm. Both shots were uh, were great shots. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, and a big shout out to Joel Carlson who big time Johnny, bowled, absolutely, bowled tremendous. Yeah. And uh, you know, he, he bowled a a terrific game here. You know, he had that ring and ten in the first frame. He had a half seven. He had a half ten, swishing seven, and a good ten pin. I, he, you know, he he could have shot uh, a big, big score. Oh yeah. Well, so could have Scroggins. Yes. You know. Yeah. Oh wow. Nice Look shot. At that, yeah. Very strong. Nice run by Joel Carlson. Yep. Defeating defending champ. Uh, congratulations, Joel. Great job. Taking out Mike Scroggins and Tom Baker. Good match here with Pete Weber. Championship match here at the PBA 50 United Healthcare Sun Bowl. Ron Moore versus Pete Weber. All right, guys, who you got? It's Pete Weber versus Ron Moore for this title. Well, you know, Ron is, uh, has always been able to step up. Uh, I think that he's going to go bowl a real good game, but I think he knows he needs 250. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think um, and we'll see. I, yeah. I, it, it's hard. It's hard to pick. Well, oh. the thing that – I'm sorry, John, I want to cut you off. Go ahead. No, you're, you're, okay. you're fine. Just last week, uh, Ron Moore told me that it's, it's bugging him, basically, that the Hall of Famers have come out here and ended Moore's reign of dominance on the PB50 uh -huh. Tour. And he wants now to put himself in a position in which those guys worry about what Ron Moore is bowling rather than vice versa. That's what okay. he has said to me. And so he's working on his mental game. He's made some tweaks to the physical game. Uh, and he's, he seems – greatly determined to to become that dominant force he was again just as these hall of famers uh are now out on tour they weren't out here when he was winning titles left to right on the pba 50 tour well they, i think uh uh we have to look at it two ways uh there's one way is that when you have uh you what ron is thinking is correct and he wants them to be thinking about mm -hmm. how Ron Moore is doing instead of him thinking about how they're doing. But at the same time, when you're bowling a tournament that has Pete Weber, Walter Ray Williams, Norm Duke, Parker Bone in the tournament, mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to dominate anymore for the whole year. <laughs> right. You might be yeah. in the battle for the title, yeah. but... but uh, and Tommy Baker, yeah. and, and a couple other guys. Amleto. Uh, Mike Scroggins. Yeah. And Amleto, what, you, you know, the, the domination factor is over. It's it's almost like, I hate to keep relating to golf, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, if Tiger comes back and the Tiger is playing well, uh, when Tiger was playing well, you know, Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, Jason Day, those guys weren't there. They are there now. And it's very, very hard to dominate yeah. when the field has got that deep. And, and that's what happened to the senior tour. They, 
that these guys turned 50, and uh, and the senior tour now is terrific. It's not as deep as the national tour, but mm -hmm. it's but uh, you know uh, the super great bowlers are there. Oh yeah, and, and uh, so it's very very hard to dominate. But having that is great for the sport to have someone yeah. of Ron Moore's credentials to say, you know what, I have to get better. It drives everybody, right? So it everybody drives is, everybody. It, the same as it did in golf. People need, had to beat Tiger, so it makes everybody better. It makes everybody better. You know, it's uh, it's one of those things you, you hear it all the time in, in Hall of Fame speeches. Somebody will say, I want to thank mm. my fellow competitors for making me a better bowler. Mm. Because, you know, if I was winning every week by 300 pins, mm -hmm. there was no reason to go out and learn different mm -hmm. angles, different shots, work my butt off getting in the gym. They made me better. Mm. And, uh, and that's what's happened to the tour now, especially the senior tour. Well, in the mindset of a champion is the quick conversation we had John Burkett. Now that he's out here trying to learn the sport and get better, we ask him, would you rather have a chance to win the U.S. Open or win a World Series? He says, do I get to beat Pete in the U.S. Open? Not only win it, he wants to beat the best. <laughs> right. I mean, that's yeah. how you get better, by wanting to beat the best. So by beating Greg, that's you know, what John Burkett said is so yeah. true. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, if he didn't get to beat Pete Weber, he would just take a World Series. Yeah. And when you think about when you think about how great Pete is, and then you think about uh, Walter Ray, back to back bowler of the decade, seven bowlers of the year, and is still uh, ten titles ahead of Pete, you go, My God, you know, how could yeah. how could he have to be? Oh, my Ray goodness. And, and, and Ron made Pete start on the left lane. Even though he left the ring in 10, he knows that's the better lane, and that's the lane he wants to finish on. Mm Jenny, you had the chance to bowl overseas with Ron Moore at the Senior World Championships. Oh, uh, what do you right. treasure most about that experience? We were we were teammates at the World Championships. We won a gold medal. Uh, it was uh, one of the highlights of my life. And uh, Ron Moore, who was bowling anchor, shot 278 the last game. He, he, he bowled tremendous. And, uh, and we beat Australia for the gold. Oops. Wow. Yeah. Everyone in the building yeah. thought that was out the window, Rondo, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Including Ron Moore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at his body. He's just, he's like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, my. Yeah. Oh, and, man. And he got back. Yeah. Oh, we, uh, we were in the, in the bronze medal match going into the ninth frame. Uh, we were 30 pins down to Sweden, and everybody on the team struck out. Mm. And we had so much momentum going into the gold medal against Australia that, uh, uh, you know, it was by the seventh frame, it was practically over. It was a great, great experience. Well, Ron has told me that it was extremely inspiring for him to see how animated you were and how much it meant <laughs> to you to be bowling uh, for that uh, for your country. Great shot. Another slap out of the well, 10. That's very, you know, you you hear the national anthem played for you. For you your, your country's national anthem played for you. There isn't anything quite like mm -hmm. to have uh, do something for your country and for your country to recognize you that way. It's just a great moment. It seems uh, a little daring for Ron Moore to be fist pumping in frame two against uh, Pete Weber. I, I, I think Ron <laughs> Moore's thinking about 300 and nothing else. <laughs> really good. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier today, Johnny. Sometimes Pete Weber just kind of seems like the sleeping lion that you want to allow to continue sleeping, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, f you pump your fist in the air a little bit at Pete Weber, and he could use that, you never know, as this, l this little oh. little thing that he'll he'll work on to make it motivate him, you know. I, I agree. He's, uh, well, you have to realize Pete's not going to shake. Right, you know? absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> it's not like you're going to run him out and throw him off. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> just, right, that's right. Oh, oh my wow. goodness! Back I to mean, back ring intense. 
He pured those shots, uh, Johnny. Yeah. These were great yeah. shots. These on were great 17. shots. That classic open palm finish, you know yep. he didn't squeeze it at all. It's just beautiful off his hand. When did you start, first start to notice or, or, or realize, Johnny, that Dick Weber had this kid that was at least as talented as Dick Weber himself? I bowled with uh, Pete in the uh, Pro-Am in St. Louis when he was 11. Wow. <laughs> and I was bowling in the Pro. We bowled in the Junior Pro-Am together. You could tell then wow. what was coming. You could tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have a match. Cause now you got a nine-pin game. Yep. And you have a match. Yeah, Ron Moore was yeah. almost ready to get down on his knees and beg that four-pin to fall. And yeah. uh, four-pin apparently doesn't share Ron Moore's uh, religious conviction. So it stood up. Whoa. Oh, my God. What a mistake, Johnny, huh? That's huge. That's a huge mistake. I have always, it's funny because I've always been against hard and straight shooting at spares. Mm, interesting. On the left side, you know, for the lefty, uh, right side for the lefty, left side for the right. Why righty. is that? Because uh, it, it, it's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, it should, you know, hard and straight for the right side is one thing. But if you just stroke it, you know what the lane's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, aim to the right side of the pin. The ball's going to hook into it. Huge mistake. And now Solid a bl seven. blowout Boom. seven pin. I think as we look at the replay of his, his, his missed four pin there, he was trying to throw it hard and straight where he's keeping right. everything under control here and maybe just got a little fast, looked to get on his toe. And but it seemed like he stuck at the line, yeah, too. Stuck just yeah. a touch. Yeah. Stuck a little bit. Trying yeah. to throw a little bit harder and just, just stuck a touch. Changes thing. And now the seven pin. Oh. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. I mean, that's uh, feels like the ball game. It's there so early in the match, it sounds silly to say that. But two consecutive missed single pin spares against Pete Weber in a title match of a national PBA event. Sorry, guys, but my, my money's with Pete at this point. <laughs> that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, there's something you never expect to happen. Cannot is, believe it. He had to have a pin cushion in his bottom. He can't wait to get up now to throw a double. Oh, yeah. You guys almost guarantee this is going to be a strike. He's going oh, to take advantage of that. <laughs> He's giving it, to, wow. giving it to Moore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Wow. Oh. Moore's still shaking now, his head. Now, in Pete seat. throws it fairly hard and straight, but, mm -hmm. but not quite the same way. Yeah. Watch, watch the difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Pete's up about a mark. Is it? Uh, They'll go up 20 with a strike yeah. here. Thirteen pins without a double. Yeah. Yeah. You can't believe he carried on that one yeah. on the left lane. Ron, uh, you know, Ron, uh, he feels, uh, especially the last couple of years, that uh, his fiance Lita has had such a big impact mm. in uh, in uh, what he's been doing uh, since then that he, he really uh, he, he says that he owes everything to her. Mm. And Lita, she's a, she is a great lady. Yeah, very know. sweet. And now it's oh a my God, solid four nine! Holy man! And and Moore's got to live through the rest of this match now. I mean, it's going to be painful to watch because every one of these missed, you know, 
missed shots on the strike shot just brings back the bitter memory of those pins that he missed because those errors just become that more much more painful. He could turn momentum around if he makes this. Mm, good point. Three straight opens for Ron Moore, guys. And I, I just can't help but think about all the work that Ron Moore has done throughout this tournament from first game to last of what a dominant performance through qualifying, averaging 251 through 16 games. And it all comes down to these three frames in this one match. Yeah, three, three opens in a row. Mm -hmm. Who would ever even think of it that no, it could happen? Never. So, and that shows our sport right there. He's bowled six frames. He's hit the pocket all six frames, and he's bowling 170. Mm. Uh, it just, um, uh, that's what where the difference comes in right there. But how about this crowd here in the village? It's very knowledgeable about what's happening. They understand mm. Ron's having a tough game here. They give him a great round of applause for that strike. Kind of thanking him for the great week he's already had. Yes, the the villages where we've been coming here so long, and it, you know this this area this is like Disney World for senior citizens. Mm -hmm. You know the villages, it's, and and they are they're extremely knowledgeable. Another here comes that ten. messenger. Oh wow! You know this this game isn't over yet. He, he you know Pete still hasn't doubled. He's made really good shots, but he hasn't doubled yet. So he's at uh, 199 or 198. He's only 20 pins ahead. Ron Moore throws a double. He's right back in it. <laughs> he had to remind the crowd that he's yeah. uh, Pete Weber. He's Pete. <laughs> but 17 and 18, whether it's topography or some little thing, it, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, where the carry is tougher on this pair, not to hit the pocket, but it doesn't strike as much. And it's really rearing its head here for uh, the last couple of games. Ron Moore still has 225 left, and Weber's pacing 190s 2 -0. So he needs to throw a double in here somewhere to put some pressure back on Ron. Yeah. Well, he, one okay. thing he's established is he loves 17. Yeah. That was a, that was a pretty shot. Yeah. Oh, my oh. goodness. Almost a pocket 710. Only the pimp and standing. But if you're Ron Moore right now, Johnny, you would really like to have them all at this point. Oh, it's, uh, you know, it's almost heartbreaking. Yeah. His, his max right now is 205 because he, because he uh, left the pin. That's what Pete's thinking about, you know. A strike and stay clean, and it doesn't matter what Ron Moore does. See what I mean, John? It's just yeah. painful to watch, you know? It is. He's, he's hit the pocket every shot, and he's bowling 174. It's, uh, it's the cruelty of our game. Yep. I and Pete's re-racking, taking no chances. All he has to do is mark out, but he's taking no chances whatsoever. It's when uh, it's very important. Don't look ahead. Mm. Think one frame at a time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. There you go. Just a beautiful shot from Pete here, yeah. but uh, let's see him toss his first double of the match. I guess that was because he struck on 17, so yep. that was a big one for Pete. That's uh, the blood in the water shot right yep. there. You know, when you really, really need it, you smell victory and and you throw it that good. Well, it's not just his physical talent we just saw there in that shot of his face. He's still got that fire. Oh, the fire is still there. Yes. And that's, you know, there's so much to be a champion, having that fire and controlling it. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, at this point Over. in Pete's career, how badly does he still want to win? I think as badly as, uh, as ever. Mm -hmm. I think that he, uh, you know, he, a win is a win. And, and Pete looks at a senior stop like a national stop. You, you see it in his in his whole anatomy mm -hmm. that it's 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 all about winning wow romer's got to be thinking when's dinner man i yeah that's had a, enough of this i i'm sure he, i'm sure he feels bad I, he's uh he's trying to figure out uh pretty much what happened because he's he has to be saying i've thrown nine good first shots Misses another and, single uh, pin. And, uh, and I'm bowling 160. Yeah. When, what? I, I threw the ball away. I'm supposed to on the first ball. I started with a double. Wow. And uh, it just came apart when he missed the forkman. Well, Gerald Carlson defeats Tom Baker in game one. Defending champ Mike Scrogg in game two. Weber takes out Carlson in the semifinal. Yeah. And now Pete Weber will defeat Ron Moore, our tournament leader in the championship match. Johnny, you and I get a few more minutes to converse. Okay. As John Mark goes down to the lanes to do some interviews with our champions. Uh, i got to tell you first, it's been an honor and pleasure to call a championship match with well, you here in the Fred. booth. Um, for Ron Moore to come back from this, we talked about how much he wants this win, how much he's prepared for this mentally, and it's the mental thing that caught him a little bit with those missed spares. How does he bounce back? Ron Moore is a champion. He's a you know two-time uh, uh, senior bowler of the year. He will definitely bounce back. That's that's not even an issue. I'm, I I could feel that uh, you know a few days from now he'll learn by his experience, and he's going to get to North Carolina at uh, George Pappas's uh, victory lanes, and and he'll be uh, I want to win this one. He'll be the same way. And I, I don't think we'll have to worry too much about him. You know he knows he made such a mistake. Yeah on that four pin and then doubled it up by the seven pin uh, which really opened up the gates but he'll uh, he'll be fine look <laughs> oh that's <laughs> he's so relaxed that's almost cruel <laughs> to split in the tent and shoot too off <laughs> yeah i'll just pick it up now then just for fun yeah <laughs> wouldn't that be something that's what he's asking should i just pick this up should i make this yeah. <laughs> What a gracious champion there as, as Pete gives Ron a few words, you know, yep. tell him nice week. And Ron did have a fantastic week here. I mean, pretty much wire to wire. Yes, he did. He, uh, congratulations to Ron Moore for such a great week and, and to Pete Weber for the victory. Well, thanks again, Johnny, and good luck with your event in a few weeks back home. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it, Craig. It was a pleasure working with you tonight. I thank you very much for inviting me. Let's take it down the lanes for John Mark Manzione. How hard is it for you to not look ahead and think you've got this in the bag when you see your opponent miss consecutive single pin spares? Well, gosh, when you see your opponent miss spares, I, I mean, you really feel bad for him. I, I, I mean, you know, it's it's nothing that you wish upon any of your opponents that you bowl. I, uh, I feel so bad for Ron d m missing those two spares and then 4-9 and back. I, I, I just, my heart goes out to him. 
And the next thing I want to say is thank you, Storm, for making the best bowling balls on the planet for me to use. And speaking of the balls, though, Pete, it, you know, it, one of the lessons that we learned watching you guys compete this week, and it, it reared its ugly head against Scroggins, it once again here, was the carry. It's just once the ball leaves your hand, you just have no control over what happens beyond that point. Well, my dad said it the best. You're 100% skill until you let the ball go, and then it's 100% luck after that. <laughs> and, you know, you, if you don't have any luck, then you don't win, or you're never great. So thanks, Dad. But, uh, you know, it's just something that all you can do is throw the ball, hit the pocket, and what happens, happens, you know. And, and like I say, you either get the good breaks or you get the bad breaks. And fortunate for me, I got good ones. Ron got bad ones. And then, like I say, I feel really, really bad for Ron. Now, Pete, what, uh, what motivates you to continue wanting to win as badly as you clearly do? We see it in your body language. We see it in your antics. <laughs> Hey, what, what, what is it that keeps you interested in winning uh, at this point in your career? Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Winning never gets old. <laughs> never gets old. So, uh, just, uh, I, I love the competition. I love to be out here. I still love the regular tour, too. Uh, those kids don't scare me yet, and I know I can still beat them. So, one of these days, I'm going to get my 38th title out there. But for now, it's, I love it out here. The camaraderie out here is second to none. I would love everybody out here, and thanks so much for everybody that bowls out here. And, 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 uh, and lastly, lastly, Pete, we, uh, we, uh, the world just lost Prince. And in honor of Prince, I have to say, it feels on the PBA 50 Tour, we're, we're partying like it's 1993 all over again because you're competing against guys that, that people grew up watching on TV, you and Walter and, and Parker Bone. <laughs> What is it like for you to be competing against guys that uh, Hall of Famers that you clashed heads with uh, back in the day? That uh, and all of you guys now have 30 or more titles. You and Parker and uh, and Walter. Uh, like I say, it just it's the thrill of being out here. It's the thrill of competition. I don't care if it's Walter, Norm, Ron, Parker, Johnny Petraglia. Everybody wants to win, and that's what we're here for. If you're not here to win, then why are you bowling? So that's what I'm here for. I want to win. Hey, great bowling this week, Pete. Congratulations. Thank you.